Adart Solutions. Add-on desire. Hello viewers, welcome to Adart Solutions Daily Current Affairs. I'm Lokesh Penagonda. This session is designed for aspirants preparing for banking, groups and such other competitive examinations. We cover news articles from both the Hindu and the Indian Express. Make a use of this session. First, we have an article dealing with the CBI and it is stated that the CBI has tried to arrest two ministers of the TMC government which is the ruling party of the West Bengal. So we'll see about the CBI in this article. CBI stands for Central Bureau of Investigation. This is India's premier investigative agency and this was set up in the year 1963 on the recommendation of Santanam committee. And this was established by or under the Delhi Special Police Act of 1946. So this is the original jurisdiction. So the Central Bureau of Investigation has an original jurisdiction in only Delhi. And if it wants to take up any cases of investigation in other states, it would have to take a permission from the respective state government. So if the CBI wants to investigate or wants to start an investigation in the state of Andhra Pradesh, it would require a permission from the state of Andhra Pradesh. And there are two types of permissions. One is called as the general consent. The other is called as specific consent. Now we will see a brief about these two different consents. So if a state government gives general consent to the CBI, the CBI can take any number of cases and it would not require the permission again from the government. So let's assume that there is a state called Uttar Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh gave the general consent to the CBI in the year 1971. And from, from 1971 onwards, whenever the CBI wants to take an investigation case in the UP or the Uttar Pradesh, it would not require the permission of Uttar Pradesh because it has already given a general consent. Whereas if the state did not provide a general consent or if the state has removed the general consent, then Every time the CBI wants to take up an investigation, it would require the government's prior permission. So let's assume that the state of Uttar Pradesh has removed the general consent it has given to the CBI in the year 2011. And from 2011 onwards, for every investigation case the CBI has to take or his CBI has to start, it will require the Uttar Pradesh government's permission. And as the CBI, as seen in the last few years was heavily misused by the central government. What the state governments are doing is that they are removing the general consent. So states such as Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Kerala has removed the general consent given to the CBI. And when they removed the general consent, every time the CBI has to take a new case in these states, they have to take the permission of the respective state governments. And we have to know that the West Bengal government has removed the general consent it has given to the CBI. So if the CBI wants to take up a new investigation in the West Bengal, it has to take a permission from the West Bengal government. But they did not ask the West Bengal per government's permission yesterday when they were investigating two ministers. So the government of West Bengal is stating that the CBI is not following the rules set by the acts and set by the constitution. This is with respect to the CBI and the related issue. Next we have an article dealing with the Spanish flu. It is stated in the article that people and the governments in general did not learn anything from the Spanish flu. So we'll see the Spanish flu in brief. Spanish flu is an epidemic. So this is a disease which was spreading so easily and the disease or the Spanish flu spread mainly during the period of 1918 to 1920 that is after the World War One, and 
it has claimed nearly 2 crore lives. So, nearly 2 crore people has lost their lives due to the Spanish flu. So, what do you mean by Spanish flu? It is a disease or an infection caused by H1N1 influenza virus. And the same H1N1 influenza virus also causes a disease called as swine flu. Slow. So, we have one virus which is causing two different types of diseases and the article is stating that we have to follow the learnings from the Spanish flu because the Spanish flu has infected and has killed more than 2 crore people on the global level. So the author is talking about taking necessary precautions with the learnings of the Spanish flu. Next we have an article where a helpline for the elderly would be launched very soon for all the estates. So, there is a helpline which will be for elderly and this helpline is called as elder line. This helpline is called as elder line and this is being set up by the Ministry of Social Justice. Ministry of Social Justice and in the image you can see the Minister of Social Justice, Mr. Thawarchan Gehlot. And also you should note that this elder line has already been started in states such as Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and several other states. So already it has started in few states and this elder line which will be a helpline for both the senior citizens and the elderly will be launched very soon in all the states. Next, we have an article where Iran has stated that it will develop its own Farzad B gas domestically and it is dumping India. So, what is the issue with this article? India has many public sector units which are dealing with oil and natural gas exploration and we have a PSU or a public sector unit called as ONGC which stands for oil and natural gas and the ONGC have one arm or one subsidiary which is called as ONGC Videsh Limited and ONGC Videsh Limited has taken up an exploration. It has taken up an exploration and it has successfully found out huge gas reserves. It has found out huge gas reserves in the country of Iran and these gas reserves are found near the Persian Gulf. So you can see in this image there is something called as Farzan B. So this is a gas reserve and it is a offshore gas reserve that means this gas reserve is held in maritime waters and it comes under the country of Iran and this ONGC exploration took place successfully in the year 2000 and later the government of India planned to begin a joint exploration with the government of Iran because it is the Iranian gas reserves that we helped them to explore and the ONGC has stated that we will invest nearly 11 billion dollars to buy these gas reserves from you and to develop it and we will import these gas reserves after producing it. And Iran was initially very welcoming regarding this proposal. And what happened later was in the year 2007, when the discussions was about to get completed, the United States of America has come out of this nuclear deal. So, there is a deal called as nuclear deal between the Iran and the P5 plus 1 countries. We have seen about this nuclear deal and United States of America has come out of this nuclear deal and after coming out of the nuclear deal, United States, States has imposed severe restrictions, severe restrictions on the country of Iran and it has stated that whenever or if a country is having joint exploration or having huge contracts with the country of Iran then will keep or will bring restrictions on this country as well. So if India goes ahead with the planned 
planned joint exploration with Iran, then it would have to face the wrath of United States. So, India has backed off this project and Iran, which was waiting for India till now, has finally dumped India and it is stated that we will develop our gas reserves and gas projects on our own. So, this is a negative step towards India and Iran's bilateral relations. What you need to understand is that Farzan B is a gas reserve and it is related to the country of Iran. Next, we have an article dealing with a COVID command center. So, we'll just see where this COVID command center is. COVID command center is in the place called as Varanasi, which is a parliamentary constituency of the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi as well. Next, we have an article dealing with the FDI. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investments. Foreign Direct Investments. So, let's say there is a company A and this company A is worth 100 crores. So, if company A is worth 100 crores, it might want to sell a part of its share or a part of its equity to other firms or to other persons and if it is selling a part of its share or a part of its equity to foreign investors, then you can call it as a foreign direct investment. And let's say there is company called as B and company B is a United States based country and the company B is paying 40 crores and it is taking 40% share in the company because 100 crores is for 100% share and as it is buying only 40%, it will pay 40 crores. So this 40 crores would be called as a foreign direct investment. Similarly, if many countries are doing, we'll get ma major funds from foreign countries. So it is stated that in the year 2000. 20, the total foreign direct investments in the country has reached 54.6 billion dollars and this is for financial year 21 that means from April 1st of 2020 to March 31st of 21 and it is stated that India's investments in foreign countries have, have been nearly 11 billion dollars so foreign countries I have invested 54 billion dollars in India and India has invested nearly 11 billion dollars in other countries. So we can see here that Indian companies are also investing heavily in foreign countries. So the net foreign direct investment would be the money we are getting minus the money we are spending that will be 54 minus 11 that is nearly 43 billion dollars. So the FDI, the net FDI for the financial year 21 will be 43 billion dollars. Next we have an article dealing with Google Mobility Index. In the last few months we have seen several countries imposing strict curfews and strict lockdowns as well. Why are these countries imposing lockdowns and curfews? This is to prevent the spreading of COVID pandemic. So to prevent the spread of the COVID virus, many countries including India has brought various curfews and lockdowns. And as a result of it, people have stopped to going to various places. So the mobility of the people has decreased heavily. So to find out how much people are going out and to find out and to calculate how much percentage of people are still going out, the Google is bringing out something called as a mobility index. So we will not see into depth, we just have to understand that mobility index is related to the people's mobility and it is brought out by the firm called as Google. Next we have an article dealing with the Coast Guard. It is stated that 12, in, 12 Indian fishermen who were stranded in the cyclone Tautke were successfully rescued by the Coast Guard. So we'll see about the Coast Guard. The Indian Coast Guard comes under the Ministry of Defense. And they are the law enforcement agencies when it comes to maritime. So they are maritime law 
एनफोर्समेंट एजेंसीज एंड दे विल नॉट ओनली लुक इन टू द एनफोर्समेंट ऑफ लॉ बट ऑल्सो दे विल हेल्प इफ देर इज एनी ऑयल स्पिल सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई ऑयल स्पिल वी नो दैट इंडिया हेवीली इंपोर्ट ऑयल फ्रॉम फॉरन कंट्रीज मेनली फ्रॉम वेस्ट एशिया सो लेट से देर इज ए शिप एंड इट इज ब्रिंगिंग ऑयल फ्रॉम वेस्ट एशिया एंड सडनली आफ्टर रीचिंग नियर द इंडियन शोर्स ड्यू टू सम रीजन देर वॉज अ ब्लास्ट इन द शिप एंड ऑयल वॉज स्पिल्ड इन टू द ओशन सो देर विल बी अल स्पिल to clean the oil spill the coastal guard would help so the coastal guard is a nodal authority when it comes to oil spill related issues in the indian territorial jurisdiction when it comes to the maritime territorial jurisdiction so this is with respect to the indian coast guard who comes under the ministry of defense next we have an article where the state of andhra pradesh is planning to bring in a fixed deposit worth 10 lakh to every orphan child so so the state of andhra pradesh has released a document which is stating that those children who have lost both their parents due to the covid pandemic they will get a fixed deposit of rupees 10 lakh and they would be able to get this 10 lakh when they re- when they reach the age of 25 years and also as the 10 lakhs rupees would be invested by the government in the fixed deposits these children will get monthly interest they will get monthly interest so let's say you are investing 10 lakh on the name of a person in a bank then you will get definitely interest this interest would help the children those who have lost the parents so you are not only providing bulk amount but also you are providing monthly help as well this is a initiative taken or brought by the andhra pradesh government next we have an article dealing with the wholesale price index inflation so what do you mean by wholesale price index so this is an index which will look into the inflation in the country it will look into inflation in the country what do you mean by inflation inflation is a general rise it is a general rise in the cost of various products and cost of various products or commodities so let's say if this is 2015 we would be able to buy 1 kilo of rice for 30 rupees a kilo let's assume this is the case and after 5 years we might be spending or we might be forced to spend 40 rupees a kilo for rice so the rice price for every kilo increased from rupees 30 to rupees 40 this increase in the general price of commodities is called as inflation and inflation is measured through two indexes one is consumer price index the other is wholesale price index you should know that the wholesale price index is published by the office of economic advisor which comes under the ministry of commerce and industry and the consumer price index comes under the central statistics office which comes under the ministry of statistics and program implementation and their base years is 2011 to 12 when it comes to wholesale price index and the base year for the consumer price index is 2012 and also you should note that when the rbi is looking into the inflation in the country it will take the consumer price index so it is a consumer price index report that the rbi will take when it wants to know the in inflation in the country and with this we have come to the end of this session inform about adults initiative to your other aspirant friends adult solutions add on desire